Hey guys, this morning as we continue on our 12-day trip, we left our harvest host in Okanagan and headed north on Highway 97 to Oroville, Washington, where, we'll, where we will be staying at a Soyuz Lake Veterans Memorial Park. Join us as we explore and review this park and take a side trip to the old mining town of Molson, Washington. Evening guys, we just uh, left our harvest host, Smallwood Farms, and we uh, journeyed up to Orville, Washington, and then we are now staying at the uh, Soyos Veterans Memorial Park, and I think that's the way it's spelled. Anyway, I'll put it up on, uh, spell it for you online there, or in front there someplace. I don't know if we'll be up there or over there, but... I'll get it on there anyway. Well, I'll uh, have to show you some of the features of the park. It's a really nice park. Let me do a scan from our uh, parking area, our camp spot. Okay, we are in camp spot 25. That's the back of it there, and there's part of the lake out there. I believe that feeds the Okanagan River. And then show you our smear in spot 25. The sun's just going down now. I'll show you that little pull through spot. Pretty nice. I'll walk out here. Show you a little bit of this. This is a uh, partial utility. It's got water electric. And as you can see it there in the far background, I'll go down there probably tomorrow and film some of that. But there's a big day use area down there. It's uh, got a roped off swimming area. Uh, there's a, a, play, a little concession stand down there. There's also a, a rental place where you can rent. I think they had uh, canoes, uh, stand up paddle boards, kayaks, and even uh, jet ski rentals there. So the, it's pretty neat. Yeah, a little uh, information about the site or the campground. It's a city-run park, basically, and it has 80 tent and partial hookup sites. It also has nine uh, walk-in uh, type campsites along the lake there, and along with the day-use area. It also has a dump station there, and you can uh, actually, if you're just traveling through the area on this. Oroville is on uh, north central Washington and it's on Highway 97, which we're only a few, we're not that far from the Canadian border. And so if you're traveling down, up or down 97, it might be, and you need to dump your tanks. It, uh, when I was over there, it was uh, $5 to dump 
your tanks. And they also have fresh water fill point too. So that's something to make a note of if you happen to be in this area. Yeah, just give you an idea of some of the sites here. Here's site 69. Kind of a typical, got the geese flying right overhead. Typical uh, tent site or non-powered non site. I got the water spigots throughout the park too. Yeah, you see a little gravel. And you got your picnic table and fire ring. That's typical of these. Now around behind me is another typical one. But this one is right on the river there. Well, I should say the lake. It feeds into the Okanagan River. But anyway, that's that's a typical site here. For a non-powered non site. And for the boaters of the world, if you come here with a, a boat, this is the... Uh, boat launch area. I think it's covered by your fee, but if you were just here on a day use type thing, it's uh, boat launch is $5 for the boat launch fee. You got a dock here. And a couple of concrete ramps here. We also have uh, over on this side, I don't know if you can see it in the sunshine. Yeah, there it is. There's a, a floating dock there with a little walkway down. Looks like the lake, they got a, yeah, they got an auto leveling type thing where the do, the ramp's on wheels, so this lake level must go up and down a little bit. But yeah, you can see the, the lake moving here, moving down towards. I think they got an outlet down there that it goes into the Okanagan River. There's a day use area here. You got parking over here. Quite a large parking area. And they got this huge area out here. Got picnic tables and barbecues scattered throughout. But yeah, it's just next to the, the boat dock there. Just huge. We'll head over there. they got the designated swimming area. I'll show you that. Here is a designated swim area. It's like they hauled in a bunch of sand and stuff. If you can see it. Get over here in the shady area. Yeah, so it goes from there, which is just off and then you can see the floats out there that kind of blocks off a quite a large area for swimming. Of course we got the vol beach volleyball. And then, uh, yeah, a whole line of uh, picnic tables and barbecues all along here. And that thing stretches quite a ways along. This park's pretty long. It goes up, up quite a ways up there. In fact, I can see a guy way off in the distance. Looks like he's fishing. I think a creek or something. I have to wander over there and see what's going on. But then there, yeah, that's a shot of the lake. Going up there towards Canada. Yeah, here's a little concession stand here. They rent, uh, rent stand-up paddle boards, kayaks. Uh, they mentioned something about uh, Sunset Cruise. I think that's a, there's a couple of big boats that seem to have been just parked out there. So they look like kind of a well, big open area with, with the covers on it on the boat. So I think they... I think you can arrange to go up to uh, up the lake on those. I also notice they also rent uh, jet skis. I see a bunch of sea dews over there, and it says uh, on a little one of the boards there. It says sea dews, ninety-five dollars an hour. Yeah, I just walk along the beach here as we go a little north. I was gonna go see, look at those, see what those two guys are. If they're fishing up there, see if they're catching anything. But yeah, see, this is still part of the whole day use area. It's just massive. And yesterday was Saturday. Today's Sunday morning, so. And it's not even 7 o'clock yet. No winds, though, in the morning. The lake is just flat as can be. But yeah, this thing was bustling yesterday when it was mid-80s here. The whole place was just jumping with 
kids, people, boats. Yeah. Really nice park. Little bird there with bright yellow head and chest there. Oh, jumped into the jumped into the bushes. I'll have to see if I can zoom in. Do the video. Huh. I'll have to look up and see what kind of bird that was. Well, we're at the very kind of northern edge of the park here. Looks like we got a large wetlands out there, and I can see a, several, quite a few birds. You can probably hear them. And I see some more of the birds with the those yellow head and chest area. See some red winged blackbirds out there also. Yeah, there's one flying down just now. Huh. Quite the activity in the morning here. Well, I think we found the last picnic table in the north end of the campground. Or the park here. Guy out there on the boat, he's fishing. Yeah, sunrise. Yeah, 10 to 7 is just, the sun's <clears throat> been up a little bit. Yeah, heading back to camp here and saw this funny looking box. I didn't know what it was. And it's like it's open underneath. I'm thinking it might be a, a bat box. And yeah, just in the middle of the park there. Okay, heading back to the trailer here, but I'll stop and show you a couple of the uh, power sites. We've got water electric service there, and it's 50 amp, 30 amp, and the standard little duplex of 120 volt, 20 amp outlet. So, but that's what they look like, gravel. The main road here, the R in these, this area is paved, but all the uh, sites are just gravel. That almost looks like a double wide site there. Well, I guess so, several of these are doubles, I guess. Yeah. So anyway, gives you an idea. There's the rest of the park. Fair amount of people, but you know, there's quite a, this Sunday morning, and there's a lot of campsites available if you were to show up. But yeah, so you, this is site, just to, got, just to give you an idea, this is site 42 here. And there's a little information on the uh, history of uh, the lake floods of this area. Yeah, if I can get in there and see that. You can see it. So apparently, it's regulated. The lake level is regulated by the Zolsal Dam near Oroville. Of course, they have to coordinate it with Canada since this lake actually crosses the border, as you can see from the map there. This lake goes up into Canada quite a ways. Anyway, there's a little piece of information. I got some signs here with the lake flood levels. So the high water mark in 1894 was basically six feet above where I'm standing, which pretty much would put most of this area underwater. And then newer ones, June 72, down here, and they got this fence here in the way. But, and 2018 came up above this fence. This fence is sitting, give you an idea. So basically, 2018, it came up to this level of this fence. And of course, that puts most of the dock, the boat launch area underwater, and floods right into the park. Today we go on a side trip to the old mining town of Molson, which is east of Oroville. Come along as we explore this piece of history.
Yeah, we drove up to Molson, which is an old mining town. As you can see from the sign there. We're going to go tour the some of the old buildings, and then we're going to go down a little bit uh, north of here. Uh, there's a museum that opens in a little bit, so we'll go to the, go to that also. Let's go uh, walk around the old town. Yeah, part of the town is just a collection of uh, old farming equipment. Probably some of this is horse-drawn stuff, too. We'll go take a look at some of the other stuff here. A windmill. It's beautiful up here. We're at about 3,700 feet elevation. An old school bell from the old uh, Chisaw. I think that's pronounced. That's how it's pronounced. From the school that was built in 1905. So that's the old bell that they had. There's an old cabin, 1902. Not sure how this is going to come out. It's pretty dark in here. The inside of the, the cabin. Yeah, just there's probably really way too much to just show in a short video, but yeah, this just kind of gives you a little overview. Looks like these are some of the people that watch live back there, but this is the old town area. With all its equipment. Yeah, and shoot this one a little bit. This is the old bank, Molson State Bank. Looks like an old printing press here. And then the teller's windows. And a big safe back there. <clears throat> they also have a lot of pictures that they've collected you know, some of the history of the area yeah we just came in the uh, school schoolhouse museum and we're starting down in the basement they've got a, quite a few displays down here she said this is where the gymnasium was this oh the yeah gymnasium. yeah this apparently this is in the basement of this school and this was where the gymnasium was which I can see the basketball yeah. lines and there's a hoop up there but yeah they have a whole bunch of displays here well travel day today we will be heading out to our uh, next campground but I just want to do a little wrap up on the uh, Soyos Veterans Memorial Park here in Oroville. This is a great park. It was uh, $35 a night for a partial hookup, water and electricity. And uh, with all the things going on here, I mean, you got, you saw the trip we took up to Molson. Uh, there's another road that goes west up to some more uh, ghost town, or I think some old mining area and stuff. Uh, you got fishing here, uh, looks like a lot of it's uh, large and smallmouth bass, but uh, between the fishing and the swimming, got a nice boat launch too, so park's got a lot going for it, and this is a, a Tuesday morning that we're going to be heading out, and there's 80 sites here, and only about 10 of them are occupied at this time, so uh, it's, uh, if you happen to be traveling through the uh, up Highway 97, either to Canada or from Canada or just want to make it a destination it's a uh, it's a nice part so we'll say uh, so long and we're headed to our our next destination we'll see you then
Thanks for watching. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and hit the subscribe button so you can follow along on our journeys. Safe travels.